time for the second installment of Wyatt Wednesdays. Wyatt Pelicano, Shepherd offensive lineman, joins us on the phone as he will every Wednesday throughout the Shepherd football season. And Wyatt, it's finally game week. How you feeling? Oh my goodness. The vibe in the air all week this week has just been electric. The boys are fired up. Is game week in Shepherdstown, soon to be game day in Rams Stadium on Saturday at 12 o'clock. If you're not there, you're wrong. Just had to say that, too. Um, yeah, but the feelings are, are extremely electric. Everybody's, everybody's psyched. Uh, I, I, you know, you, you only get to feel this way really once, twice a year when it's the opener and uh, maybe a championship or big late playoff game, you know. So everybody's excited. Why well, you guys get to kick off the season at home for the first time in a, in a little bit, um, and you're taking on the Southern Connecticut State team that you guys played last year to kick off the year. Um, a team that last season struggled a little bit early, uh, certainly struggled in the game against you guys, but played pretty well toward the end of the year, um, competitive with that New Haven team that you guys face in the playoffs. So what are you seeing out of them this year in preparation this week? Yeah, I mean, uh, like you said, we, we kind of uh, got the better of them. In our, in our last meeting, I think that that probably left a little bit of a bad taste in their mouth, uh, which, I'm, I mean, I'm sure it did. Nobody wants to get beat, especially at home. And you're right, this is the first time, I think in my, it is definitely the first time in my years here that we get to open at home. Um, <clears throat> and I am super, super, I think we're all super excited for that. And out of what we see coming from them, uh, like a lot of these any 10 conference schools like New Haven, how you guys talked about, you know, we get a lot of, a lot of odd stack, a lot of, uh, these guys fly around, you know, maybe not so much size on these programs in the any 10, but you see them, they play very fluid. You get a lot of different fronts. They like to mix it up. Uh, it, br- it brings a lot of challenges for us, um, schematically. But I think, I think as long as we play fast, physical and, and the brand of Shepherd football that we know and love, uh, these guys, it's going to be tough for them to, to overcome what we're bringing to the table. What, how tough is it to really contain the excitement? Because as you, we've already mentioned, home opener, you just mentioned it's the first home opener for the entire season, week one since you've been there. And then everything else with the pomp and circumstance, Tyson's coming back for the week, having the breakfast before the game, going to be at the game, coming off a regional championship again, just Talk about, I guess, all of that combined and what's going on within the program because of it. Yeah, I mean, everybody's uh, everybody's pumped. Uh, I mean, I'm sure you guys can hear it in my voice, man. It's, it's, it's like I said before, it's game week in Shepherdstown, and, and everybody is fired up. Um, Tyson coming back is huge. You know, we're all so, so, so proud of him and everything that he has been able to accomplish up there and to be able to watch it uh, live and in real, in real time. Is, is so cool, and to have him coming back is going to bring, obviously, everybody's going to want to come see him. Everybody's going to want to come and see us. Uh, so everybody is excited, but it's also, you know, it's important because, like, obviously everybody gets excited, but we got to still, we got to do the job. You know what I mean? Like, excitement by itself is never going to get it done. We still have to be locked in, cool, calm, and collected and maintain that, and then just you got to find a way to channel the excitement into the right moments, you know, so that's important. Um, but, yeah, like you guys said, man, the, the energy is in the air right now. I think everybody and their mother is excited about the Shepherd Rams and Tyson Bajan coming back and, and everything in between. And we, Tyson will come back as a member of the 53-man roster for the Bears, the backup quarterback as it appears right now. How does it, how's it feel to say you blocked for an NFL quarterback? <laughs> uh, yeah, you know, it, it, it's super cool. And, uh, I, I have, uh, I actually, it, it's, it's cool for me. Cause it, it's also not really the first time. Um, cause I also blocked for an NFL running back, Julius Chestnut back in high school. Uh, so I am, you know, it's, it, it's really cool to watch dudes that you play with and see that you played it. Like, you know, I, I stand, I stood shoulder to shoulder with Tyson. I stood shoulder to shoulder with, uh, with my man, Julius too. And it's like, it, it's cool to see that you can watch someone who, who's on your level playing in the same level as you go and accomplish their dreams and, and make that happen for themselves. And, I mean, that is really what he's done. I mean, everybody's saying it. It is the truth. It, it's, a, it's, a, it's a movie script story that Tyson has put together for himself. Um, so it is, it's so cool to be able to watch as a friend and support 
Um, and it's and it's cool as a former teammate. And it's it's a it makes you realize that it can happen for anyone. You know, like you, I watch him do it, and then I see him. He went, you know, just last year he was going to treatment the same place I go to treatment. He was going to practice the same place I was going to practice. I watched another dude go, like, it has his locker. You know what I mean? It's just, it, it, he had the same tools that everybody in our program is being given, and he was able to make it work for himself, just like um, we're seeing, like, all those dudes that had success and, and even got signed, you know, Brian, uh, Ronnie, Joey, all those guys. Like, it, it, it's so crazy to see that the road is there. It's just if you're willing to take the steps to make it happen for yourself. And that's really just the lesson that I think watching Tyson and all those dudes do what they've done, um, it, it shows that it's possible, you know, which is which is a cool thing. Wyatt, I believe you mentioned this to us at Media Day, and I want to make sure I get this right, but um, was it Ethan Williams who you had played youth league with? And Yeah. And yeah, what's that been like? Funny. Uh, that's, it's been awesome. You know, we were actually just, uh, just yesterday in the locker room. I was in there with, with, uh, it was me, Ethan and, uh, and Seth, uh, Morgan, our quarterback. And they were joking around, you know, calling each other like, Oh, who's little bro. Who's, who's big bro, you know, talking to each other. And I was sitting there just kind of minding my own business. And Ethan was like, well, why is little bro? And Seth was like, who, like, why would you say that? Like, you know, like trying to come to my defense. And I was like, well, technically speaking, he's right. You know, Ethan's been, um, Ethan's been a has been an important piece of my life since I was a very young kid. You know, like my pops actually coached both of us. That was back in the day uh, when I was a little chubby kid. I couldn't make weight for the for the teams I wanted to play for, so I had to play up because Ethan is older than me. So I got I got a different level of respect for him. I've seen everything that he's done. Um, but you know, like it was like he really was like a, a big brother mentor to me, watching him play and exceed it. Because I mean, dude, if you go back, if you want to have a good afternoon. Go throw on Ethan Williams Broadneck High School highlights because it is, I mean, it is, it is just deep with crazy plays. That dude can play ball. Um, he's got a vast knowledge for the game. Yeah, he, he's gonna be, he's gonna be a um, a very important contributing piece for us. I think <clears throat> he brings a lot of wisdom and seniority to that wide receiver room, which with those skill guys, sometimes you need man. And I, I, he's someone that I trust, you know, to to really keep on those dudes and keep them in line and use that seniority for good and show them, I know he knows the right steps to take. That dude's got a solid head on his shoulders, and I know that he's going to lead the young guys in the right direction. But, yeah, he, he's a uh, he, he's, uh, – that's, that's big bro. You know, that's he's always been a, like a big brother to me. Um, so it, it's really cool to have him around. Wyatt, back into the game this week against the Owls. I know you probably can't give it all to us, but so far what's been the uh, game plan going into Saturday? Yeah, I mean, like I said, those guys uh, defensively for them, they really like to fly around. Um, they 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 stay in that predominantly three down front, but we see a lot of from them. Not sure what we're gonna get, you know, because uh, there's been some word of them losing some of their bigger nose guards. So there's there's a chance they could try to uh, maybe switch to a four front or even a bear and give us some bodies in there to to make it hard to to control the middle. But honestly, that's really the, I think gonna be try to be our. Uh, philosophy is to just play violently and control the, w- the middle and whatever they give us, whether it's a four man box, five man box, it could be a seven man box. I, I trust the dudes up front that they're going to handle business and get the job done. And I think if they handle business, the team will go as far as the O-line will take them. Um, I'm, I trust Seth to get a job, to get it done in the backfield. I trust uh, Malachi to get it done in the backfield. I, I trust all of our wide receivers to when it's their turn to, to ball out. But I think uh, the huge point of emphasis for us all season is going to be to dominate the war in the trenches. And I think if we can do that on both sides of the ball, there's not going to be a team that can stop us, and that includes Southern Connecticut. Why, why can you explain how things change based on, from an offensive line perspective, based on a five-man front or a four-man front or a three-man front? Oh, yeah, it, it's uh, totally different. You know, it changes a lot of the rules, changes how you want to approach it. Um, you, you set up different things. That, that's the big thing now, and especially with college ball, you get these zone blocking schemes, a lot of them, because everybody wants to throw in the RPO stuff. So how we block up three mans versus uh, like a four man per se, like three man that you're, you're relying a lot on, you want to make sure the key for your, for your three down front is to, let's say if we're running a zone left concept, Right, you want to set that wall hard on the backside to try to to give because you're going to get a lot of different movements from your backers. So 
the key is you're, it's going to be difficult to time up and get your, your matchups right with these backers the way they fly around. So you want to set a wall uh, hard on the backside, make sure that that backside four technique is not a factor. Keep him over there. Keep the backer that's with him if they're in a stack over there with him. And then try to just run everything over the top on the front side of the play to open up a gap in the middle. Or if they stay put and stay solid or play, try to play to that backside, hope uh, you can definitely spring if you go back and watch the New Haven tape from last year you can see it because they gave us a lot of that odd stack look the bastardized version of it with different bodies in different places um, it's very easy for them to put themselves out of position in that so it's really uh, when you get the three down it's, it's more about trying to be as sound as you can while being as violent as you can um, to expand the gaps versus in a four down it's very more straightforward. The dudes are kind of already lined up where they're going. You could get some stunts, but probably not. You, it, it, when you get the four man, the math is easier to figure out on who you're going to. But uh, you just got to be, you got to bring violence because those dudes are going to be, they're not hiding where they're going in that four down front, you know. So they're going to, they're going to, they're going to be in a good leverage spot to make a play for themselves. So it's about actually executing the job versus the three down. I feel like it's way more mental making sure everybody's going to the right place. Why we talked with you at media day in the scrimmage. We talked to you last week. We know you've been dealing with an injury. What's that rehab process been like? Uh, you know, it's the uh, same thing as last week. You know, I'm, I'm attacking it. I'm putting everything I got into it, um, trying to do everything I can to contribute to the program in any way, even while I'm on the bench. You know, I spend a lot of time uh, out there coaching up the young guys, um, making sure that they're, they're going to be ready. I know that, uh, I know that even with, me out this is this is something that i i was talking about to um one of my teammates james bell today uh is like with injuries man like in shepherd in shepherdstown one thing we are is deep so it doesn't really matter i think i you could hand pick one of the best players on our roster the dude behind them might not be as talented but they're going to be able to do the job and we will be able to win football games with them i really believe it so uh and that goes for me included i'm not immune to that i believe that the line without me, even if it might not look as strong or as big or whatever you want to say, I trust those dudes to get the job done. And I trust even if we were to, you know, I don't even want to go into the actual depth of it, but uh, I think we, like, we're deep. Like, I think that those dudes are going to be fine. I think that, and I know that, and that gives me comfort in knowing that I don't need to, I don't need to try to sell out and do anything stupid and re-injure myself even worse. So, and that's a, that's a very calming thing for my mind. Uh, but yeah, I'm definitely doing everything I can. I'm in there every day, uh, multiple hours for the most part, doing what I can to come back. All right, Wyatt, we'll get you out on this one. A non-football question, kind of have a little fun here. If you could only have one fast food for the rest of your life, what would it be? Because I know offensive linemen like to have cheat meals every once in a while. Uh, okay. Well, every once in a while is being generous, but I appreciate <laughs> you making it sound like I'm, I'm really on top of dieting. Um, but, all right, so I guess my, my counter question would have to be, does Chipotle count as fast food? Yes. Oh, well, then that, there you go. I think that that's uh, – though I will say, I don't know if you consider Blaze Pizza fast food, but that one in Martinsburg, I've been going there a lot more lately. I really – I really, their stock is rising in my book. I like, <laughs> I'm a big Blaze Pizza guy. But that said, Chipotle, I think, is just like – it's just the most like – what you see is what you get. It's going to be consistent, and it's going to be, like, the healthiest option for you, getting what you need, getting, make sure you get enough protein. You know, sometimes you gotta you got to look that worker in the face and, and, and scare him into giving you a little extra meat. Uh, but, you know, you got you got to do what you got to do. And they know what they're doing. You know, sometimes you'll get that, that, that solid Chipotle employee that's, uh, that, that'll ride the bin and, and dump it on the bowl for you. You can um, never order Chipotle online either. Oh, uh, no, you don't do that. That is a that is a cardinal sin. You are asking to get ripped off, in my opinion. That's, that's just my opinion. I think that they're going to give you way more rice than you want and probably half a scoop of, uh, of whatever meat you're choosing. Yeah I, I'm, yeah, I actually have a little trick where I'll go up there and I'll ask for the uh, – I'm a big – I like the, that new chicken out past door they got. And I'll, I'll say, like, oh, can I just get – I'll get the chicken out past door and then I'll watch them put a regular serving on. And then I'll say – Oh, actually, you know what? I think I'm going to want double. And that way they got to match it. Because if you just say, oh, I want double, they'll give you two little baby servings. And nobody wants that, man. I want, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a big dog. I need, I need some protein. 
All right, Wyatt, thanks for the time, and uh, we'll see you later on today when we're out of practice. Absolutely. Can't wait to see you boys. All right, Wyatt Wednesday, second installment.